It's not your typical Great Central Railway station. Rushcliffe Holt is small, austere. The platforms are made from concrete, supported by brick columns. Most distinctively, the up and down main lines go between them, not around them. It's the only surviving non-island platform, even in its very simple form. And there are only ever four in actual on the GC in any case, all within Nottinghamshire, so she is unique. And the great thing about it is it's, it's a theatre. The trains are visible from all sides. You get a little bit of the echo as they work through and you, the public can just watch and love it. And it's a lovely station. The fact that it's now regularly maintained means we've gone from a bramble and hawthorn scrub to wonderful wildflower displays come the, the spring because it's just left as basically a meadow. When the railway opened, there was no station here. The Great Central already served East Leek, just a mile to the south. But a few years later, the new line was beginning to have an impact. The halt was opened in 1911 to serve the newly formed Rushcliffe Golf Club on the west side of the line. A few years later, a gypsum mine opened on the east side. Both club and company survive today. Most pictures that you see of it, if you find them in the archives, it's all of trains actually shunting and propelling backwards into the gypsum works. Typically J39 seemed to be the order of the day. Very much an industrial location. You can't possibly claim it's a pretty station, but it's a very nice uh, location to actually see and watch the trains go through now. North of the station, more sidings were added to serve the gypsum plant. These remained busy with freight traffic, even though the Great Central route was being run down. Rushcliffe Halt itself closed in 1963. By the 1980s, the freight was gone too, and Rushcliffe Halt, shorn of its platform shelters and footbridge, was abandoned to nature. Among the buildings removed was the small ticket office. This is the only known close-up picture of it, taken two years after closure. The path leading up to it and the concrete base remain. This is the staff side of the station building, so you can see it's, it's basically split into two. Most importantly, of course, we have the, the old, what was the old fireplace on the hearth here. Here's the original entrance, well worn, even though you know, it's a quiet little station. Welcome to Rusty Holt's original toilet. Brick base with a, a corrugated iron top, and as you can see from the location on the floor, location of said, uh, said facility, and that was as exotic as it got there. Returning the station to life has seen tens of thousands of volunteer hours invested, from keeping the lineside vegetation under control to providing temporary facilities for visitors. The distinctive platform shelters and station name boards have been rebuilt. There are plans to provide a replacement footbridge too and reinstate the platform lamps on their stanchions. Its simplicity actually really helps it because in terms of reinstating those buildings we haven't got to rebuild an exotic brick built station. It's literally, you know, tin, tin sheds, timber sheds and that can be done relatively simply, relatively cheaply. Wonderfully, so much of the original infrastructure survives against the odds. Signals and telegraph poles, and the London and North Eastern Railway designed signal box, named Hotchley Hill, which was provided to control trains into and out of the sidings. This is now under restoration. Not only has passenger traffic returned to the halt, but freight trains too, though these days heavy machinery is used to load and unload containers from wagons. In terms of the Pewter Great Central, as it stands, it's actually a key location here because it's currently the only passing point on the, the northern section of the line. It's also the only run round point. So any which way in terms of heritage services, it will be really busy because it will be that, that passing point. It's got a great future, even though it is probably the, the humblest of all stations on the, on the railway.